Today we've got a bit of a special treat. Uh, Corsair sponsored this video and they hand delivered us their new Corsair Xenion Flex. Can you guess what its cool one party trick is? Oh my god. <laughs> it's an OLED panel and it can bend up to like 800R curvature. This thing is insane. I don't know about you guys, but I've been watching OLED for a long, long time. And one of the original things that was a big selling point for me was the fact that it's bendable and you can flex the panel and stuff. We're finally there. We've had bendable phones and foldable phones for quite a while, like several years actually, but no one's really done it in a monitor yet where you can do it yourself. Like, yeah, we've got curved screens. Those are cool, but this, this is something else. Oh my God, it just clicks in place once it's there. You can also stop this thing anywhere you want along that curvature. So say you're doing office work and you're not gaming, you wanna put it back to flat, 21 by nine, uh, but then all of a sudden you're done. A little early, it's time to game. Oh my God, and then it just full, it <laughs> just bends out. That's so wild. Uh, it's 1440p, 21 by nine, covers 99% of the DCI-P3 color space and hits 1,000 nits, which it's crazy. This thing does 240 hertz. Absolutely wild. This is a prototype unit, so nothing is final, final. The stand is gonna be a little different. These are gonna be shorter and a little wider. These handles, by the way, they are gonna be able to go back into the screen, uh, but right now, We've just got a prototype unit, so they kind of have to stay out once they're out. But we've got pretty good front I.O. We've got two USB 3.2 ports. We've got a headphone jack. We have an input button, power button. And then this is probably for navigation. Our OSD is locked today because it's a prototype unit. They don't want us messing around with anything too much. Uh, so we can basically just change input and power it on. As for the back, it does 240 hertz. So we've got HDMI 2.1, 2.1. Uh, display port 1.4, but you know, DP 2.0 isn't here yet. USB C. One of these, there's two USB C. One of them can actually do display port out. So if you want to hook up a laptop really quick or something, you can totally do that. Two more USB A slots, and then a power bar. One of these USB C is also upstream. So if you want to connect it to your PC, no problem at all. That's why there's no USB B port, which is kind of crazy. I've actually been waiting for USB B to die, and uh, maybe this is the monitor that finally kills it. It is a prototype, and this is gonna be mostly the same probably. They said the big improvements are gonna be on the handles, uh, on the firmware, and then on the stand itself. Uh, this will be shorter and wider. I think it's fine, personally. I know if Horst was here, he'd complain. He's like, why is there a contraption on the back of my monitor? But let's be real, you're gonna set this thing up and then you're just gonna leave it there. You're not gonna poke your head around the back unless you've got like your office right in the middle of the room. Um, I think it's totally fine. Uh, if anything, it actually makes me feel a bit more safe because there's like a big support system for the bend. I still <laughs> feel a little uncomfortable when flexing it myself, but that's kind of just because it's brand new. I've never really done this before. Um, as for everything else, it's good. You know, it's all just blacked out. There's a small Corsair logo on the back of the stand and there's a small Corsair logo on the front of the stand. Um, the one caveat to this is there is basically no adjustment at all when it comes to like pivot, rotation, height adjustment, um, even mounting it, you actually need, because all the important brains of this thing are in this back uh, stand right here, and there's only a little bit on the panel box right here. So there's a cable that connects the two. And what Corsair has said is that you cannot get a VESA mount for this guy. Um, you have to either just leave it desk mounted, or they are selling a little clamp that'll clamp onto your desk and attach to this guy. I don't know how that's gonna work. They haven't shown us or brought it here, but at least you've got an option. As you can see, it actually looks pretty good. But what I wanna know is, how does it look turned on? Uh, they actually sent us two, if you haven't noticed that already. Uh, they were worried that, you know, since it's a prototype, one of them might be a little finicky or it might fail. So we've got two here today, and luckily they're both fine. This one over here is set up uh, on a Corsair One that they brought with them and we're gonna check out the HDR, we're gonna game on it, we're gonna just like watch some other content, check out the 0 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time thanks to that delicious OLED panel. Oh man, I can't wait. Let's check it out. The one kind of feature that the stand does have is uh, tilt. So you can tilt it to your liking, which is great. They found that the size of the screen was just the right amount for most people to be kind of in that sweet spot. So they're not worried about height adjustment or anything. They've had tall people, they've had short people, they've had average people come in and daily drive this thing or at least check it out in the office. Apparently it's fine. 
feels pretty comfortable to me. Like, I've got a 21 by 9 1440p ultra wide at home. It's a little smaller. Mine's 34 inches, I think, and this is 45. Um, but still, this is kind of really good, actually. It's very comfortable, very pleasing to the eyes. We watched their own HDR content that they brought with them. It looks pretty good. But what I want to do is do the classics that we always check. Wow, I can't type on this keyboard at all. Um, just to see how good it really is. They're promising a thousand nits peak brightness, not VESA certified, but apparently they're working with someone else to set up their own kind of certification process. I mean, one thing I'm already noticing just because it's OLED is like the nice black, just pure black on either side here, because uh, the pixels are just turned straight off. So that means that everything is going to be a dimming zone. Every pixel is a dimming zone. Uh, so you're really not gonna beat something like an OLED in terms of HDR content. Maybe like even mini LED on a big TV is like 1100 zones or something. Like, yeah, that looks pretty good, don't get me wrong. But OLED is like 4 million zones or something. If it's ultra wide, 1440p, then that's like eight, no, it's not eight million. It's like six million pixels, six million dimming zones. Oh my God. Obviously we're not measuring or testing anything today, so I can't verify any sort of claims about like a thousand nits or anything like that, but it's getting pretty bright. Wow, it's already doing 240 hertz. Yeah, I get this, David. Look at this, look at this. 240 hertz. Like, I know it's 1440p, it's not 4K 240, but that is insanely fast for an OLED display. 240 hertz with the like microsecond gray to gray um, pixel response time. That's wild. I love it. Even my Alienware monitor at home, the AW3423DW QD OLED display, that thing only does 175 hertz. And once you go to 175, you don't get 10-bit color anymore. I want to see this. Now, I asked them while they were here. I specifically asked them if this would do 10-bit color at higher refresh rates. They said no. But I want to see where we can get away with it. So a couple things. One, Windows is saying it's peak of 565. Windows is often wrong about this, so don't trust that, especially when it's like brand new firmware that like no one has access to. Uh, but it's saying it's doing 10-bit and it's saying it's 240 hertz. <laughs> so whatever, maybe they're gonna do it. Cause that's kind of my one problem with my Alienware monitors. I've got to go down to 144 for true 10-bit. Uh, maybe this is my next display. I don't know, but I've been waiting for something like this for so long. We asked them about price and they wouldn't give us a direct answer because this isn't coming out until like Q4, maybe Q1 next year, but we did hazard guesses, um, I guess like $2,500. Jeff said 2,800. And they both, all they said was that it's lower than that. They said it's competitive. If they can get this thing close to like two grand considering the screen size and the other capabilities of it, um, I don't know. This might be basically the best gaming monitor on the market because yep, he's just crisp. One, Minor complaint is that it's not G-Sync Ultimate, but it is G-Sync compatible and it's got AMD FreeSync Premium. So the variable refresh rate on this is gonna be pretty good. And the reality is I can't see any issues when following this UFO across. One of the benefits to buying a Corsair product is that if you're already in their like product suite of IQ, uh, boom, this thing will do it. I don't think there's any RGB on the back. Good. Nope, definitely not. Hey, I don't mind back RGB. But you can control stuff from a single hub. Probably the OSD stuff as well. We don't have access to that, like I said earlier, but uh, it's a pretty cool feature if you actually already use IQ. It's just icing on the cake. Okay, now I got a game. Can I game yet? Oh, it looks good already. I gotta be the cool looking T side guy. Give me, oh, you got some skins, yeah. right? And look at this, look at this. Oh. Oh, okay, I died right away, that's okay. Sorry, Th thanks Bert. But like, it's pretty clear. Could be, a, yeah, it could be a little clearer. Now, that being said though, there is uh, a ton of firmware updates and stuff for them to make to this panel. This is a super early prototype. Um, so I only expect it to get better. And the reality is, man, it still looks pretty good. My current monitor is the AW3423DW, the QD OLED guy. And uh, I gotta say, this is the first time I might actually be tempted to swap. It's got more of a glossy look to it, not so much anti-glare, but the reality is I kind of like that anyway because the colors really pop. It's an anti-reflective coating with low blue light. And honestly, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like colors are desaturated or anything like that. It looks just crisp. Okay, we gotta look, Counter-Strike's great. You know, it's great, but uh, we gotta do something a little more cinematic to show off this like amazing 
ultra wide HDR experience here. The one kind of big drawback to this is that it's 1440p. So you've got a 45 inch ultra wide display running 1440p. And I've already said that like 32 inches, 16 by nine is kind of like the max you should run 1440p. Um, this is something around 84 PPI at this point. And for gaming, it's okay. I do think that when you get a little closer, you can kind of start to get a bit of a screen door effect. Um, but gaming and watching regular content, I think it's perfectly fine. The problem you're gonna run into is if you're some kind of designer, which is really unfortunate because this thing would be great for like, oh, I want a game and you pull it out and then, oh, I want to design stuff and you put it back. Or maybe you even like designing on Curved, I don't know. Um, but that is easily the biggest downfall is that this is unfortunately not 4K. However, 4K, 240 Hertz, ultra wide, I don't even think that's a thing yet. So Corsair has really kind of outdone themselves with this guy. Here's another super cool feature that they mentioned. You don't want just one of these. No, no, no. You want two of them because I feel like I should bend more, okay, whatever. Um, you want two of them because what you can do is you can take one side and only curve that one side, and then you can put another monitor up next to it and curve the other side and make like a full, like 180 degree cockpit view, which is just super cool. So you can have like a flat windscreen and then curved windows that kind of wing out the sides. I can't wait. The HDR on this thing is fantastic. And the reality is too, with 99% of the DCI-P3 color space, this doesn't come pre-calibrated out of the factory, but you, it does have access to that whole gamut. So if you have a color emitter or something at home, you can absolutely color uh, correct this thing yourself to make it dead on. There are always concerns with OLED about burn-in. And there's also a lot of concerns with monitors in general about dead pixels. The really cool thing is Corsair is offering, very similar to Dell's warranty with the three-year um, anti-burn-in stuff, it's got a three-year warranty that covers both burn-in and dead pixels, pretty much the two banes of OLED monitors. So you don't have to worry. It is sponsored, but I honestly think this thing is pretty nice. I'm waiting to see what they can do with the firmware to really make the panel shine. Um, Honestly, once this thing comes out in a few quarters or whatever, there's a good chance I'm gonna get it. I just upgraded my display and I already <laughs> need a new upgrade. Thanks for watching Short Circuit. This is the Corsair Xenion Flex. Uh, make sure to get subscribed and check out other videos if you want. Thanks for watching.